Oh, praise God. Father, you're so worthy tonight. You're so worthy tonight, and we just love you. We give you glory, and we give you praise. Oh, we love you, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Move up and down every aisle, in and out every row. Touch and heal, deliver, set free and make whole. You're so worthy to be praised, Lord. So worthy to be praised. Now in the name of Jesus, I speak to sickness and disease right now. And I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ, you go from this place. And I thank you, Lord, that you sent your word and it healed and delivered. And Lord, we love you with all of our hearts and souls and mind and strength. May the power of the Holy Spirit be a part of our lives and be a part of our walk. Now, Father, we ask that you bless this night. The wisdom of God fill this place. Let us get answers, Lord. We love you so much and we're so grateful. So grateful for all that you do in our lives, Lord. And Lord, help us not to complain or murmur but to look past whatever the situation is and to be able to give you thanks and praise for all that you do in our lives. Lord, we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Amen. Well, turn around and greet your neighbors and welcome them here tonight. Y'all came back tonight. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hey, I don't want to waste any time. Let's welcome Dr. Joel Wallach as he comes tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Pastor Dollar and Pastor Taffy and his whole crew. They've been so wonderful. Really appreciate the help that everybody's given. And uh, I have to thank the greatest physician of all, right, who has always been, who is, and who will ever be the greatest physician, our Lord Jesus. And we love him forever. And I know he loves us forever. And I appreciate uh, you being here. Um, I know we're on the right track because many of you come back. I, I do see and recognize faces. And um, uh, I'm glad you're here because we're going to talk about uh, detail tonight that you wouldn't have believed yesterday. For those of you who were here yesterday, you understand that uh, what we covered was pretty outrageous. This is going to be 10 times more outrageous tonight because oftentimes the truth is outrageous. And um, just for those that weren't here last night, just very briefly, uh, the human being requires certain elements to be healthy. These things are not optional. Everybody knows we need oxygen. Everybody knows we need water. But oftentimes, they don't need, know that we need these 90 essential nutrients, uh, 60, 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, and three essential fatty acids. Because we've been given misinformation. Uh, physicians will tell you, oh, just eat well, you get everything you need from your food. That's not true. Uh, minerals, for instance, make up two-thirds of the 90 essential nutrients. And minerals do not occur in a uniform blanket around the crust of the earth. They occur in veins like chocolate and chocolate ripple ice cream. And a plant only needs three minerals to be healthy and make good seeds for the next generation. Human beings need 60. So you can eat a pretty good slice of, of uh, organically grown multigrain bread and be 57 mineral short and wind up with lots of diseases because they're called essential nutrients because if you're missing them, you get diseases. Calcium deficiency, for instance, you can wind up with 147 different diseases and need 30 different specialists. You'll be on at least 50 different prescription drugs and all you have to do is supplement with the 90, we call it the Mighty 90 and with special attention to calcium and in a few weeks, a few months, all 30 to 50 of those diseases are gone. Praise God. 
So we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to cover, I believe, about five major diseases, and then we're going to open up for some questions. The pastor gave me permission to answer questions a little bit. We'll have some fun with that. And so if we could, if we could have that first slide, we're going to do a little review from yesterday for those that weren't here. We're going to start out with high blood pressure. High blood pressure is not genetic. I'm going to say this to the different points of the compass because I know it's kind of a shock. Uh, high blood pressure is not genetic. High blood pressure is not genetic. High blood pressure is a simple mineral deficiency disease that can afflict anybody. Simple mineral deficiency disease. You supplement with the minerals, you don't get it. If you don't supplement with the minerals, you do get high blood pressure. And if you supplement with minerals, it goes away. It's just that simple. High blood pressure medication can lower blood pressure, but it doesn't solve the problem that caused the high blood pressure. You can symptomatically reduce high blood pressure, but you're still going to die from the complications of high blood pressure, even if though your blood pressure is, quote, under control, unquote. So once you appreciate that, you're going to add 25 to 50 healthful years to your life. We can go to the next slide, please. And of course, it's getting more difficult today to control high blood pressure with medications. And they have to give you three different medications. And some medications are combinations of two and three medications. They didn't have to use, do that years ago. Years ago, they could give you one medication and get your blood pressure down into the normal range. But um, it's difficult today because of a disease we call celiac disease. It's also known as irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, or Crohn's disease, which are all the same disease, just different degrees of severity. And if you have any of these problems, uh, which show up as constipation, diarrhea, dermatitis, eczema, asthma, uh, you can wind up uh, people with 20 different diseases usually have celiac disease. You give up gluten, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats. Within a couple of weeks, you're considerably better within a couple of months. Usually most of those diseases are gone when you take the Mighty 90, the 90 essential nutrients with the gluten-free diet. And so we can go to the next slide. And salt, everybody wants to uh, tell you that salt is a bad thing. Salt uh, is somehow related to high blood pressure. W whether you believe it or not, how many of you have heard that salt has something to do with high blood pressure? Okay, good, we've all heard that. Well, the first thing that a good farmer puts out for his livestock is a big salt block, right? And there's nobody out in the pasture telling a cow she's limited to one lick a day, is there? And so I refuse to believe my human patients are dumber than a cow. So I said, look, go ahead and just salt your food to taste. Don't worry about it. And people will say, well, every time I use salt, I swell up. My ankles get all fat, you know, and swollen. And I, uh, I get worried about that. Well, when you swell up, when you get edema in your ankles and your face and your hands, um, when you use salt, that means that you have a low blood protein. You eat four to six eggs every day, and within two weeks you can salt your food with impunity, and you won't swell up anymore. You raise that blood protein up. People say to me, well, I can't eat eggs because my doctor said I've got to worry about cholesterol. We're going to cover that in a minute. Remember I told you a lot of misinformation? When we get to that part, you are going to be shocked. Okay, well, let's go to the next one. Uh, and that little box down there in the middle, uh, this was actually the same study I just showed you on salt. That particular study was actually a government study called the Sodium Task Force. They said uh, medical doctors want you to get your salt intake to one gram a day, which is kind of like a half a teaspoon of salt a day. And if you do that, it increases your risk of dying of a heart attack by 600%. By following the doctor's advice, it increases your risk of death from a heart attack by 600%. If you defy your doctor and take double and triple the dose of salt that they're recommending, you actually live 25 years longer and don't die of a heart attack. Isn't that amazing? Okay, that's a government study. Okay, next. Again, for those of you who weren't here last night, uh, this is a big study um, published in February of 1999 in Scientific American. Uh, Scientific American sent a group of uh, um, genetic and DNA scholars to Nigeria they went out into the forest of Nigeria, and their task was to find one black tribesman who had normal genes for blood pressure. They were going to take his blood and genetically engineer him and make a vaccine and come back to America and inject every black man with his vaccine to get everybody's blood pressure down to normal. When they got to Nigeria, they were shocked to find out that only 7% of the people in Nigeria had high blood pressure, 93% were normal. They were just shocked because in Chicago, the number or the percentage of people who had high blood pressure who had a genetic relationship to Nigeria from the old slave days, 33% had 
high blood pressure in Chicago, but only 7% in Nigeria. And that tells you immediately that it's not genetic because your position on Earth doesn't determine how a genetic disease will manifest itself. So if it was genetic, it'd be 7% in Nigeria and 7% in America. Or if it was genetic, it'd be 33% in Chicago and 33% in Nigeria. But the fact that this big disparity tells you immediately it's not genetic. So what was the difference? Why, why these people in Nigeria were protected? Well, because they actually were primitive. They had no electricity, and so they still used wood for fuel to heat in their homes and, and cook their food. And they would take the wood ashes and use that as a fertilizer, and wood ashes is a misnomer because the, the stuff that's left when you burn wood for fuel is not really ashes, it's the minerals that the tree had picked up out of the ground. You burn the, the carbon, <clears throat> and these minerals are put into the gardens. The okra and the sweet potatoes and the onions and the tomatoes and corn take up these minerals. You eat those foods, you get the minerals in that fashion. Well, how many of you, raise your hand, how many of you live entirely out of a garden and never go to a grocery store anymore? <laughs> well, looky there. <laughs> okay, well, that's a big problem, as you'll see in a moment. Okay, next slide, please. Well, over the next six years, the scientists from Oxford uh, University in England, in London, England, these were people who were genetics experts. They poured through all that information and data. And in 2005, they published in the British Medical Journal, which is the equivalent of the Journal of the American Medical Association here, which is a very respectable medical journal, JAMA. They said in the British Medical Journal in January of 2005, that high blood pressure is not genetic. High blood pressure is not genetic. And so I want everybody on the count of three to yell hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah! <laughs> it's not genetic! <laughs> Which means you can control it. You don't need permission from anybody. You can control it just by supplementing with the Mighty 90. And that's it! You learn how to take your own blood pressure, and it slowly goes away over a period of a month or two. I've had people who are on blood pressure medication for 40, 45 years, and in two weeks' time, they don't have high blood pressure anymore. They go back to a normal life. Men get sexier. <laughs> they don't have that, you know, low T and ED and all them initial things. Okay, next. Another thing for the ladies, it's really fun to lower your blood sugar now, this won't fix the problem because it's not a mineral, but dark chocolate is now thought to be the third category of vitamins. Everybody knows about water-soluble vitamins, the B vitamins and C, and the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. Now, there's a third category of vitamins. This was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association on August, August 27, 2003. And it says that dark chocolate is, in fact, the third category of vitamins because of the polyphenols and PEAs, the phenylethylamines, and the flavanols in there will lower blood pressure. And there's no negative side effect, and so you can just have a lot of fun. See, I'm going to help you lower your blood pressure on Valentine's Day. Here, have some dark chocolate, right? A lot of fun. Okay, next. Oh, yeah, we have one. It's a liquid called Cocojevity, and we have little pieces that are called Triple Treat. Triple Treat. We'll talk about Triple Treat in, in Cocojevity later. We can go to the next one. Okay, so you know how to prevent and reverse high blood pressure. You just take the Mahdi 90. If you have celiac disease, you have to give up wheat, but if you don't have uh, barley, rye, and oats, but if you don't have celiac disease, you just take the Mahdi 90. You learn how to take your own blood pressure. If you can't afford the instrument to do it yourself, you just go to a, a pharmacy and you sit in that chair and you get your free blood pressure. You can do it twice a day if you want, right? Okay, now we want to talk about cholesterol. Whether you believe it or not, raise your hand if you've ever heard that cholesterol, elevated blood cholesterol, and uh, elevated blood triglycerides have something to do with um, stroke and clogged arteries and heart attacks and stuff like that. Sure, if you don't raise your hand, you're lying because everybody's heard that, right? <laughs> or you're asleep already. <laughs> okay. Well, there's not a single disease that is caused by elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides. There's not a single disease that is caused by elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides. There's not a single disease that's caused by elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides. The medical community has known that since 1971. But there's not a single law at any level, at the federal, or the state, or the county, or the city level, that forces a doctor to cure you and there's a cure available. 
In our heart of hearts, we'd like to believe that they're altruistic and they want to help you, right? But there's not a single law requiring them to cure you when there's a cure available. So you make up your own mind. Well, if it's not elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides that cause stroke and heart disease and clogged arteries, well, first of all, what, what, what does having elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides mean? Well, it usually means that you have diabetes or prediabetes or low thyroid or you have a deficiency of niacin, which is vitamin B3. You can have deficiencies or ratio problems between omega-3s and omega-6s, fish oils kind of things or flaxseed oils. And you could have deficiencies of chromium and vanadium. Two trace minerals are involved in maintaining normal blood sugar and normal blood fats. You have deficiencies of all those things will cause elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides, but elevated blood cholesterol and triglycerides do not cause any disease. So if that's true, what causes stroke and clogged arteries and heart attacks? We can go to the next one. There it is, it's the hidden killer. All right, uh, hold your hats now, hold on to the seats, because here it comes, next slide. Bam, there it is. <laughs> Oreo cookies. Because about 70 years ago, the original Oreo cookie, that little white icing in between the chocolate wafers, wafers <clears throat> was real butter and heavy whipping cream. But it would melt at room temperature and it would make the paper bags they were sold in on retail shelves oily. So the chemist at Oreo cookies came up with what's called trans fatty acids, which they synthetically made. And they won't melt even at 380 degrees, let alone room temperature, right? <laughs> But for looks and for shelf life, it was the most wonderful thing that ever happened. But it had one itsy bitsy, tiny little unintended consequence. It plugs your arteries and causes stroke and heart attack. Hmm? Now, you've all heard the inflammation theory now of disease, right? That's kind of the talk around the inflammation theory of disease. Well, it's that trans fatty acid that causes inflammation and stroke and plugged arteries because it irritates the lining of your arteries. Same thing with, with processed meats, uh, deli slices, sausage, ham, bacon, bologna, salami, pastrami, pepperoni, jerky, corned beef, spam, hot dogs, anything with nitrates and nitrites in it increases your risk of colon cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, and coronary artery disease, dementias. You know, eating a corned beef sandwich on what is it, March 15th or 17th, March 17th, uh, St. Patty's Day is okay once a year, but having it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner is going to kill you early, 25 years early. So you want to stay away from those processed meats as well as fried foods. Fried foods cause trans fatty acids, right? There's no good fried foods when it comes to health. You have to make that decision. We talked about that last night. Um, if you give up fried foods except once a year sometime, pick some arbitrary holiday, and have fried food once a year, you might get away with it, but don't have it every day. Don't have fried eggs for breakfast and fri French fries for lunch and fried chicken for dinner. You're gonna die 40 to 50 years early. You avoid those foods, you'll add 25 to 50 healthy years to your life. Let's go to the next one, please. The first slide I showed yesterday when it came to health, it was Time Magazine cover, it said that our next generation will not live as long as us. How many of you have heard that? Raise your hand if you've heard that our next generation is not going to live as long as us. I think most people have heard that by now. And that is because of a study that was done out of the University of Missouri, my old alma mater in Columbia, Missouri, came out three years ago. And they examined 300 five-year-old kids. They examined 300 five-year-old kids. They did a little ultrasound study in their carotid arteries. What they were looking for to see if there were the beginnings of clogging at age five. And they found out that these little five-year-olds were 65% blocked. They were 65% blocked. Because when I was a kid, we were weaned off of formula and off of breast milk onto peas and carrots and soup and things like that. Well, today we wean our kids off of formula onto things like um, chicken McNuggets and french fries and Oreo cookies. Don't do that anymore because those trans fatty acids are clogging their arteries. Well, the medical system's approach is to use cholesterol-lowering drugs when they're eight years old. They're, they're already starting a campaign to begin to use these 
statin drugs, Lipitor, to lower cholesterol in kids when they're eight years old. We do not want to do that, and you'll see why in a moment. Next slide, please. Margarine is the worst type of fat for your heart. Now, who told you to give up butter and eggs and, and cream and lard to cook with? Who told you to give that up and go to margarine and cooking oils? The doctors, whose average lifespan, those of you who were here yesterday, the average lifespan of a primary care physician, a family doctor in America is 56. Why would you listen to a group of people on how to live a long, healthful life whose average lifespan is 56? It doesn't compute. The reason I believe in Jesus is because he always tells the truth, right? I'm going to stick with him. <laughs> okay, next. Now, I love this, this story. This fellow here, 88 years old, and this is published in the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most prestigious medical journals. This old dude is 88 years old. He eats 25 eggs a day. Now, why would this old dude in, in 1991 be eating 25 eggs a day? Well, the reason is, I mean, you have to ask yourself, I mean, maybe he ate 25 eggs a day because he didn't have any teeth and couldn't eat steaks anymore. <laughs> or maybe he owned an egg ranch and, you know, was, was quality checking his product. <laughs> but the reality is, when you read that scientific article, the more eggs he ate, the, the, he realized he became more studly. <laughs> he became more studly the more eggs he ate because testosterone is 95% by weight cholesterol. So when you go on a cholesterol restricted diet and you go from cream and butter and eggs and lard to margarine and cooking oils and you take drugs to lower your cholesterol, there's nobody home. So ladies, <laughs> if you want your man to be studly, six to 10 eggs a day. Now they cannot be fried. They can be soft poached, they can be soft boiled, they can be soft scrambled in butter, not margarine or oils. Now, I can tell you from personal experience, I'm 71 years old and 10 eggs a day works. <laughs> <laughs> hoo -ah! <laughs> See, now, the ladies, gentlemen, the ladies understand what I'm talking about. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, well, low-fat diets are just going away because when they compare the amount of heart attacks and cancer and other diseases that have been associated with high-fat diets, there's no difference between a low-fat diet and a, a high-fat diet when it comes to heart disease and cancer and so on. Okay, next, please. Now, so how do you prevent getting clogged arteries eating 10 eggs a day? <laughs> well, you just take the Mighty 90 and don't eat fried foods and don't eat processed meats with nitrates and nitrites. And if you already have clogged arteries, you add a little program to it, to the Mighty 90. There's a little sidebar here, which we'll talk about in a minute. We just call them the daily tablets. We'll just call them the daily tablets. Okay, you take those along with the Mighty 90, add Katie bar the door. Okay, everything opens up. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is dementias. How many of you ever heard of Alzheimer's disease? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Now, Alzheimer's disease is a physician-caused disease. It's not genetic. Alzheimer's disease is a physician-caused disease that is not genetic. Now, you're not the mama of a doctor, are you? <laughs> okay. Now, listen, my wife is a surgeon. I love doctors. I love doctors, and they do have their place. But in this case, doctors have caused this disease. Forty years ago, Alzheimer's disease didn't exist even by another name. Alzheimer's disease did not exist 40 years ago, even by another name. Today, it's the number four killer of adults over the age of 65. So just a short period of time has become a huge, huge problem for industrialized countries. 
85% of all Alzheimer's disease is diagnosed in the world. I'm going to repeat that. 85% of all Alzheimer's disease diagnosed in the world is diagnosed in America. It's an American disease created by American doctors. Because 75% of your brain weight is a fatty insulation material called myelin. How many of you heard of myelin? Okay, good. It, myelin makes up 75% of your brain weight. It's the white matter of the brain, the gray matter, the, the thinking cells and the memory cells sitting on top of the white matter, which is this white fatty insulation material, makes up 75% of your brain weight. And when the myelin goes away, you get Alzheimer's disease because the naked nerve fibers all shard out and they look for nerve tangles with CAT scans and that's how they diagnose Alzheimer's disease. Well, Alzheimer's disease is caused by this myelin going away. Myelin makes up 75% of your brain weight, and myelin is 100% cholesterol. So if you're on a cholesterol-restricted diet, you're taking cholesterol-lowering drugs, guess what you're going to get? Alzheimer's disease. So you have to dump the cholesterol-lowering drugs. You have to start eating 10 eggs a day, no fried foods, no margarines, no cooking oils, and... The, and take the mighty 90, you take the mighty 90, and the odds of you getting Alzheimer's disease is zero. 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 Why don't you think about your grandparents? Think of all the eggs and all the cooking they did in lard and everything. They didn't have Alzheimer's disease. They died at 92, 110, stuff like that. Okay, next. This is the U.S. News World Report, February of this year, 2010, and they're talking about the 80 million baby boomers coming along, living to be 100. In that upper right-hand corner there, it's a summary of one of the chapters that says, seven habits that you can do to lower your risk of Alzheimer's disease. That tells you right there that Alzheimer's disease is not genetic, because there's no habit you can do that's going to reduce the risk of a genetic disease. See, they know it. Seven habits that you can do that's going to reduce your risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. Don't eat fried foods. Don't eat processed meats with nitrates and nitrites. Take the Mighty 90, and you won't get it. Next. That's just some of that myelin shows all that fatty stuff around those nerve fibers. Next. There's a tidal wave coming of Alzheimer's disease because there's 80 million baby boomers coming along who did whatever the doctors told them. I want to live to be 100. I'm a baby boomer. We want to be the first generation where everybody lives to be 100. Will you lower your cholesterol and you'll live to be 100? Give me, give me, give me. I want the newest. I want the newest cholesterol-lowering drug. Give me an overdose of that one, Doc. Hmm? Well, the unintended consequence is low T, ED, and if you could remember, Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> Next. Cost $12,000 a month to maintain an Alzheimer's patient. And you're going to pay for it. You are literally going to pay for it out of your Social Security checks when you get there. Next. And let's see. Oh, yeah, Alzheimer's in an unrelenting upward trajectory. And again, they're picking on the baby boomers because they're the ones taking all the cholesterol lowering drugs and eating the cholesterol restricted diet. Next. Ultra-fat diet is actually therapeutic. I've been doing this for things like MS, multiple sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, Parkinson's disease, dementias, including Alzheimer's disease. Totally preventable. You know, people like Muhammad Ali. We could actually solve his problem, but you can't get to him because he's got all these layers of agents and representatives and stuff, so you can't get to him to help him, right? But at any rate, um, I talk about 65% of the calories in your diet having to come from good fats, eggs, Red meat, not processed meat, but, you know, good steak every day, or pound a hamburger a day keeps the doctor away, kind of thing. <laughs> and they said, okay, we're going to show Wallach wrong. What they found out was they could get rid of all those diseases by giving in 90% of your calories coming from fat. 90% of your calories, and that's from the, the medical school at New York City. Next. Now, this came out in 1992. It said that um, just vitamin E alone could actually help people with advanced Alzheimer's disease. Vitamin E alone can actually help people with Alzheimer's disease. Just one out of the 90. And nobody wanted to believe that. This study was done by the University of um, 
California, San Diego, and the Salk Institute that made the Salk vaccine. I mean, we're talking about respectable institutions here. There was a big firestorm over that because when I read that title in, in 1993, I said, um, and that means it cannot be genetic. And there was a, actually a firestorm set off in the media by that presentation I gave. And so they, these uh, universities and, and the Salk Institute redid it. Next slide, please. Five years later, the headline was bigger. Vitamin E might slow Alzheimer's disease. And it, it, you can, <laughs> same agency said, oh, it's getting bigger here. Now the next one, and I'll have to tell you what this says, uh, Johns Hopkins University, uh, where that terrible event happened today, right? Uh, John Hopkins University up in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, they did a study in Cache County, Utah, and they picked Cache County, Utah because these were all Mormon farmers. These guys all ate the same diet. They're all very faithful to the religious dietary laws, and they lived 10 years longer than the average American. They lived to be 85 instead of 75. They gave half of them, of, of 5,000 of these people, for a 10-year period, just vitamin C and vitamin E. They got crazy over the nutrients, so they gave two instead of one. Instead of 90, they gave two, vitamin C and E. And the other half, they gave a sugar pill. Nobody knew who got the sugar pill and who got the vitamins. Well, at the end of the 10 years, the ones who got the vitamin C and the vitamin E were 78% less likely to get Alzheimer's disease than the ones that just got the sugar. You reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease by 80% by just taking two of the mighty 90, vitamin C and vitamin E. What if you take all 90 and avoid the fried foods and eat your 10 eggs a day? The, uh, the odds of you getting Alzheimer's disease is zero. And please, please, please don't say, well, that sounds kind of interesting. I'm going to ask my doctor. <laughs> you mean the person who's going to live to be 56? Ooh, ouch. Okay, next. Look at that. Just eating good fish like salmon twice a week will reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease because you're going to get two of the 90 essential nutrients, the omega-3s and omega-6s, right, in the right ratios. Next. Big study in New York. Gosh, just eating a healthy diet reduces your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Does that sound like a genetic disease to you? No, cannot be. It's impossible to be genetic with articles like that. Study on 2,000 people from New York. Next. Okay. And so we already know how to avoid Alzheimer's disease. There's actually four dementias. There is senile dementia, which is now called vascular dementia because there's nothing wrong with the brain. The arteries are clogged. And then... There is Korsakoff syndrome, which you can, I can cure that in two weeks. I don't care because it looks like Alzheimer's disease, but it's actually a um, um, symptom of a thiamine, vitamin B1 deficiency. People eating lots of sugar and no thiamine, and it looks like Alzheimer's disease, but uh, you just get rid of the sugar and you give them the Mighty 90 and it goes away in two weeks. It's a miracle. Then there's Wernicke Korsakoff's disease where it's actually MS, multiple sclerosis, and Korsakoff syndrome. That's easy to take care of. And then, of course, there's Alzheimer's disease. So I like to nutritionally treat them and prevent them by giving everything that would cover all four. Don't try and cherry pick one. Well, I'm going to prevent Alzheimer's disease. You get the other three, right? So you, you don't cherry pick it. Okay, next. Well, let's see. Oh, CT scale. Oh, we're going to cancer. I apologize. You've got to back up. I apologize. There we go. Cancer. Big thing. Big thing. Cancer, right? That's pretty scary. But you can prevent cancer 100%. By again, avoiding the bad things. Prevention is always easier. It's kind of like putting oil in your car before the engine burns up. You put oil in your car before the engine burns up. You don't wait until the engine burns up and say, well, let's put a little oil in there. Don't get all crazy about trying to get healed when you can prevent it. It's real simple. Okay? Much cheaper, much less painful, and you'll add 25 health years to your life. Okay, next. CAT scans, which doctors will tell you are harmless, actually have 400% more radiation than they used to think you had. 29,000 new cancer patients every year, of which half, 14,500, die after just one CAT scan. You know, you can get an ultrasound, a, a high-definition ultrasound for 50 bucks, tell you the same information. They can see the valves in the pea-sized heart of a little embryo, human embryo that's just a month old. That high definition ultrasound, there's no radiation to it, no risk, costs 50 bucks. That CAT scan costs 4,000. Next. High fiber diets do not cut colon cancer risk. That's another old myth. High fiber diets do not cut colon cancer risk. This was a study on, on um, 
90,000 nurses and 50,000 male doctors over a 20-year period, the Harvard Nurses Health Study, there was no problem. I mean, just high fiber diets didn't help. Got the same rate of cancer from high fiber diets to low fiber diets. But when you ate a high fiber diet because of the risk of celiac disease, because fiber is usually wheat gluten or, or oat bran or something like that, it increases your risk of diabetes and heart disease and stroke and other stuff. Don't eat high fiber diets. There is no benefit. In fact, there's unintended consequences that are not nice. Okay, next. Look at that. Fat doesn't increase your risk of breast cancer. You can actually eat 90% of your calories from fat as long as you don't fry it. Next. This was a, another study, only 15 years, of, I think a study of 15 years, Harvard Nurses Health Study, 90,000 nurses. You take a high-end multivitamin like our Mighty 90, not a one-a-day Centrum or something like that. It won't work because it only has like 32. It's the Mighty 32 instead of the Mighty 90. You take the Mighty 90, this reduces your risk of colon cancer by 75%. Are there any drugs that will do that? No. Next. Let's see here. Study finds very well done meat linked to breast cancer. You can reduce your risk of breast cancer, ladies, by 462% by eating your meat cooked medium or medium rare. If you cook your meat very well done where it's burnt, where the fat is burnt, it tastes good, but it's a killer. And the devil comes in many guises, including burnt fat. I mean, think about it. You know, hell, fire, and burnt. And... I mean, that's the devil's sense of humor there. Okay, next. We've known about selenium being able to prevent and cure certain types of cancer since 1912. Since 1912, we've known this, and I had to sue the FDA. I sued the FDA and won in federal court. They appealed, and uh, I beat them in the appellate court, and then they appealed, and they signed off on the steps of the U.S. Supreme Court for me to be able to say that the trace mineral selenium can prevent certain types of cancer. The trace mineral selenium can help your body make certain anti-cancer substances. Just to say those simple things, I had to sue them three times in federal courts. But the truth won out there in that case. We were able to beat the FDA to death on that one. Thank you. Okay, next. This is just another thing on selenium. is a big study out of uh, the University of Arizona. Um, just taking 200 micrograms of selenium, one-fifth of a milligram of selenium. It'll reduce your risk of prostate cancer in men by 69%, colorectal cancer in both genders by 64%, lung cancer, whether you smoke or not, by 39%. Anybody who smokes and doesn't take the Mighty 90 with a little extra selenium is foolish, aren't they? Now, I can guarantee you, ladies, if you take the Mighty 90, you will never get prostate cancer. I can guarantee you that. Okay, next. Next. <laughs> Oh, th I love this one. Arsenic can prevent and cure certain types of leukemia. Arsenic. We've known it's an essential nutrient necessary to prevent certain types of cancer, certain types of leukemia since 1947. Isn't that funny? Okay, next. Okay. Preventing cancer is very easy. Once you get it, it's a full-time job to treat it as a chronic disease, and you can add 5 or 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 years to your life when you have cancer, but you're going to be working 24-7 for the rest of your life. It's much better to prevent it. That way you have a life, right? It's much better to prevent it, but we can work with you if you do have it. You're salvageable through God's grace. Okay, next. Oh, got a backup one. I'm sorry. Okay, diabetes. One-third of Americans have diabetes. It's higher in the black community than the Hispanic community. It's the least in the Asian community, okay? Uh, diabetes is a simple mineral deficiency disease. It's not genetic. Type 2 diabetes makes up 98% of the diabetic population in America. It's a simple mineral deficiency disease. We've known this since 1957. We've known this since 1957. It's a simple mineral deficiency disease. 
Now I take the Mati 9 and I take what we call the Sweeties, which is the trace minerals necessary to support and promote, I can legally say support and promote healthy carbohydrate and sugar metabolism at the cellular level, support and promote healthy blood sugar levels. We've already established that micromanaging blood pressure doesn't save you from ki being killed by high blood pressure, and micromanaging your blood sugar doesn't save you from being killed by diabetes because high blood sugar is just a symptom of diabetes. It's not diabetes. You have to fix the cell walls. Okay, next. Next. Okay. That little red thing on the right side is supposed to represent a, what's called a receptor site on the cell wall. Every cell in your body, the trillions and trillions of cells you have in your body, all have receptor sites that are sensitive to insulin. Now, if you don't have these trace minerals, those receptor sites are not um, sensitive to insulin. Most people who are type 2 diabetics have as much as 10 times more insulin than a normal person. It's not that they lack insulin, so why are they giving them more insulin? They're trying to override that system. Oftentimes, doctors will tell you you have insulin-resistant diabetes because they are being honest with you. Because they're telling you you got plenty of insulin, you're just resistant to it. So the nice thing about this, you take the Mati 90, you take the Sweeties, which has all these trace minerals, and what happens is you'll resensitize those receptor sites. You've got to watch it, though, because your blood sugar will drop. Right? And so you have to take your blood sugar every morning, as you've been empowered to do by your doctor. And you've also been empowered to adjust your medication. You do it, you cheat all the time. I'll just have that piece of pecan pie, a little bit of ice cream on it. I'll just take more of my medicine. And, you know, you, you learn. How, but it, the a, A1C hemoglobin gives you away. You know, you go to the doctor, oh, yeah, my blood sugar is 90 this morning. But your A1C is 14 instead of 5.2. You know, you've been naughty. And so you've got to watch it. So you take your blood sugar every morning. And as your blood sugar begins to drop, and it will very rapidly, sometimes in 24 hours, I've seen it drop 90 points in 24 hours. You can't take the same amount of insulin. You've got to take, be faithful. Take your blood sugar, adjust your medication as you've been empowered to do. And when you wean off of your medication, you can go back to a normal life. But you have to stay on the Mighty 90, and you have to stay on the extra sweeties. It just goes away. Well, kind of a fun way to add 25 healthful years to your life. Next. That's what the sugar metabolism looks like once the sugar gets inside your cell. Now, none of that happens if you don't have these trace minerals to sensitize that receptor site. Next. This is what doctors do for diabetes, Avandia. Killed 100,000 people last year, but it's been approved by the FDA. So you have your choice. The Mighty 90 and Sweeties are Avandia. Now, your doctor will be just overjoyed to prescribe Avandia to you, but <laughs> you start talking to him about the Mighty 90 and the Sweeties, they say, oh, that, that Wallach, you know, he's one of them quack, 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 duck kind of people. <laughs> okay, next. Hmm, lifestyle approach for type 2 diabetes and the metabolic syndrome. Next. Okay, next, you've read that. Oh, this is a big study on 44,000 black women. Drinking juice causes more diabetes than drinking soda pop. Drinking soda pop increases your risk by 27% of diabetes. Drinking juice brings it up by 31%. Now, that doesn't cause it, but these women were all deficient in these trace minerals. And taking in the sugar just sped up the process, made it happen quicker. Next. OK. So you know what to do for diabetes. You stay away from all the steel. You got to stay away from all the bad stuff, right? No fried foods, no processed meats. You got to stay away from sugar. You got to take in the Mighty 90 plus the Sweeties. Do your due diligence. Take your blood sugar every morning. Adjust your medication appropriately as you've been empowered to do. And shazam, thank you, Lord, it's gone. That's, that's, here's a good time. Let's say on three, thank you, Lord. On three. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I love that. Oh, okay. Now, arthritis is a simple mineral deficiency disease. We learned how to prevent and cure arthritis 300 years ago. We learned how to prevent and cure. But I have bone-to-bone -bone arthritis, Dr. Wallach. I don't care if it's bone-to-bone -bone arthritis. I don't care if you've had that for 20 years and you're in such pain now, no medication works to help the pain. Doctors have talked you into double knee replacement and you're scheduled tomorrow. You call them and say, I'm going to delay it until after January because I'm going to try this. Doc Wallach, Mighty 90 stuff. Give it 90 days and see what happens, even if you have bone-to-bone -bone arthritis. Even if they have surgically removed your meniscus, 
We can rebuild it. Praise God. We do it for athletes all the time. We do it for people in the military all the time. We do it to regular people like you and me thousands of times a month. Thousands of times a month. Next. There's going to be an epidemic of arthritis in America here. Why is that? Because there's 80 million baby boomers coming along and they have 72 joints, 10 toes, 2 ankles, 2 knees, 2 hips, 3 vertebrae, 2 shoulders, 2 elbows, 2 wrists, and 10 fingers. And every orthopedic surgeon is running up and down the aisles of churches saying, Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. There's 80 million babies come, baby boomers come along, they have 72 joints, and I'm going to replace them all. <laughs> but all you have to do is take the mighty 90 and stay away from the bad stuff. You'll never get arthritis. I'm 71 years old. Okay? And if this was a harder surface, I could stand here on one foot, because I've got a lot of padding up here. But I could stand on one foot for three hours and give the lecture. As you'll see in a minute, you'll see why. Okay, next. Bell's palsy still baffles doctors. For 200 years they've been doing research trying to figure it out. We've known for 300 years what causes. It's just a manifestation of osteoporosis of your skull bone, squeezing the seventh cranial nerve. You treat it nutritionally as osteoporosis, it goes away. It's just that simple. Next. Let's see. Okay, who told you to give up sunlight? Who told you not to take vitamins and minerals? You could get everything from your food. See, a vitamin D3 deficiency, which every doctor is now has taken blood tests to see what your vitamin D3 level is, that's another physician-caused disease. Nobody in a third world country has vitamin D3 deficiency. It's an American disease caused by dermatologists. Okay, next. Even non-cola drinks, like 7-Up and stuff like that, um, Dr. Pepper, those kind of things, uh, Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola. The, you don't want to be drinking carbonated drinks during meals because they will actually um, uh, neutralize your stomach acid so you cannot absorb minerals or digest proteins or absorb B12. Next. Uh, that's medical. See, the medical industry, their answer to arthritis is pain relief and surgically changing your knees out and your hips and your elbows and shoulders and fingers, right? Why not regrow your own? Does God have arthritis? No. Did Jesus have, he was a carpenter. Did he have arthritis? No. And you and I are built in the image of God because the Bible tells us so, right? So if God didn't have arthritis and cancer and heart disease and diabetes and hemorrhoids, why should we? Okay, hallelujah. Okay, next. Okay, oh. That Biox, that painkiller, had a, it, it was the best painkiller ever invented, but it had a little side effect. It killed 85,000 people. Okay, next. <laughs> Fosamax and Boniva, shame on you, Sally Field. It actually causes fractures. Next. Okay, let's, uh, oh, let's see here. Look at that. No, knee surgery for arthritis is useless, worthless. That's from Harvard Medical School, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Next. Well, this guy was the president of, um, of uh, McDonald's Corporation, had for seven years in a row had double arthroscopic surgeries every year so he could play golf. In the seventh year, he actually had a double knee replacement because he got weary of those procedures. He was in such pain he had to take Oxycontin, couldn't do his job properly, and they fired him. The board fired him from a $100 million a year job because he had a double knee replacement. And of course, every time he tries to call the um, orthopedic surgeon who did that to him, the surgeon looks at us and says, oh, that's Ralph. We're not going to answer his phone. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, back surgery is unnecessary. We can support and promote healthy maintenance and repair, which means we can regrow your disc. Why would you have surgery when you can regrow your own disc with a little bit of supplements? Well, my, my doctor said, you mean the one who lives to be 56? Next. Men and women get uh, osteoporosis, not a postmenopausal woman's disease. Next. This is just 2010. Okay. Men and women both get osteoporosis. Next. You know how Cleopatra got her calcium? It was kind of a peasant's thing to get it from limestone and oyster shell. So she, she put pearls in vinegar and drank that vinegar pearl mix every day. $5,000 a day for calcium supplements. We get ours is a lot cheaper. Okay. Next. Those uh, top two are the ones, uh, the middle two, the middle two, the Healthy Starter Pack and the Liquid Classic. We'll talk about that next. 
We want to think of the mighty 90, and then every time you have a disease, you want to take something special for that disease. That's why we have the flower concept next, 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 next. Okay, that's me. That's my bone density test. Uh, you can see me up there at 5.5. Uh, um, I'm up there with 18-year-old male athletes, and I'm 71 years old, and that's because I've been doing the Mighty 90 since I was nine. Been doing the Mighty 90 since for 62 years. Thank you. Thank you. My blood pressure is 121 over 71. I've never been on a prescription medication. My resting pulse is 43. My resting pulse is 43. Huh? Now, if I were to go to a cardiologist, he'd want to give me a pacemaker. <laughs> he'd want to put me on medication. He'd want to give me a heart transplant. But I'll bet I can outlast him in a fight, okay? <laughs> I just have to dodge him for 56 years. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to briefly say a couple of things uh, about obesity here, and then we're going to open this up for questions for a few moments. Um, obesity is a disease of deficiency. It's not a disease of excess. Obesity is not a disease of excess. Obesity is not a disease of excess. And that's why nobody's been able to solve the problem. Because everybody views it as a disease of excess. It's a deficiency disease. The symptom of the deficiency disease, these special minerals, the minerals deficiencies cause a special symptom called the munchies. And so instead of giving you these minerals, medical doctors invented the snack food industry. Hmm? That's the treatment for the munchies, is snack foods. Next. So, Hell's Kitchen is the book for diabetes, for obesity, for the metabolic syndrome. We've got plenty of those out there. Hell's Kitchen, you know, we call it Hell's Kitchen because a kitchen in your home can be a place of heaven or a place of hell, depending on how you cook. I mean, you can kill somebody, you can purposely murder them. All you got to do is give them out with everything and eat fried foods, fried foods for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You'll walk. Okay, next. The paleo diet, which is just essentially meat and vegetables, no grains. Oh, wait a minute. Doctors say the whole grains are good. You mean the ones that live to be 56? Okay, go on. Next. Oh, that tells a story. Next. 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 Ne oh, yeah, look at that. Next. Look at that. Next. 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 Okay. Patrick Duell weighed 1,072 pounds. He gave him a stomach bypass. They put him on a calorie-restricted diet, and he lost 462 pounds over a two-year period. And this is him leaving the hospital to go home. When he got home, he died. <laughs> Bam! He just drops dead. Because when you're obese, fat is not the disease. Fat is just a symptom of the disease. Just like when you have diabetes, high blood sugar is a symptom of the disease. When you have high blood pressure, high blood pressure is just a symptom of the disease. Being overweight and obese is just a symptom of the disease, which is a mineral deficiency. The mineral deficiency will still kill you. You all know somebody who's lost 50 pounds, 100 well, Francine did such a good job, she lost all that weight, and then she went and died. Next, this gal here, she had two Guinness World Book of Records. Rosalie Bradford, she had two Guinness World Book of Records, very famous lady. Uh, one, number one, her first Guinness World Book of Records, she was the heaviest woman ever weighed. She weighed 1,200 pounds officially by Guinness World Book of Records. You went on two dates with Rosalie, you had a ton and a quarter of fun. And then her second Guinness World Book record, she officially lost 736 pounds. And then she died. <laughs> because the doctors failed to understand that the weight was not the problem, it was just the symptom of the disease. Okay, are you getting it now? Okay. The Mighty 90 will prevent you from being overweight. If you're overweight, you take the Mighty 90 and then you throw in what we call the Slender FX Weight Management Program to it and the weight just goes away healthfully. You stay on those things, you never gain the weight back, 
and you'll add 25 to 50 healthy years to your life. It's that simple. Okay, next. Next, next, next. Oh, back up one. 44% of our kids under the age of 15 of all races look like that today. That's because they are minerally deficient. It has nothing to do with too many video games or too much television or too much texting and all that kind of stuff. It's a mineral deficiency disease. Next, next. See, everybody wants to think this is the cause of obesity. This is this, the symptom of the cause of obesity. It's not the cause of obesity, it's the symptom of the cause of obesity. Next. This young fellow here from South Carolina, 14 years old, weighed 555 pounds. They put the mother in jail and they took him away from the mother. They should have put the pediatrician in jail because she went to him every year saying, my kid's 200 pounds overweight, my kid's 300 pounds overweight. She kept going to the pediatrician. He said, make him exercise. They should have put the pediatrician in jail, not the mother. Okay, next. Loyola University in Chicago came out in August of 2009 and said, exercise won't help you lose weight. In fact, it makes you hungrier because when you sweat from exercising, you're not losing just water, but a soup that contains all these minerals. And when you lose all these minerals, you just get hungrier. Okay. So now you take that money, but you have to take it appropriate for body weight. Somebody who weighs 100 pounds will take one third the amount of somebody who takes 300 pounds because it goes one dose per 100 pounds of body weight. Okay, it's by body weight. You always come to me and say, well, I've been taking it for 14 months and nothing's happening. Okay, we weigh 200 pounds, how much you take? Well, I take a thimble full faithfully every day. Okay, well, that won't work, okay. Okay, now I've covered a lot of territory. I have a few minutes left here. We don't want to run into your time, so I'm going to take a couple of questions. Uh, that gentleman in the gray here and the mustache, way in the back, he put up his hand first. Yes, sir. age of 20, he, uh... <laughs> okay, that's enough. Okay, I get the picture. What? I have to ask you, I have to ask you one question. Was the kid born apparently normal? Yes or no? Okay, no, no, it's too complicated. You'll have to come to the side with me. Any, you know, the lady in the orange there. You, the long hair, ponytail, yes ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> All my life, uh, well, my father had PKD. Uh, all his sisters had PKD. His mother had PKD. And they said it's genetic disease. No! PAD, peripheral artery disease, causing high blood pressure is not genetic. PAD is not genetic. PAD is not genetic. PKD, uh, polycystic kidney disease. Oh, polycystic kidney disease is not genetic. It's not genetic. <laughs> Thank PKD. you. PKD, polycystic kidney disease is caused by malnutrition of the embryo in the first couple of days of pregnancy. Now, were all these people breastfed? Yes? Yeah. Okay, now the mother, growing up was, as a newborn baby, was breastfed, and so she developed celiac disease, probably. Does the mother of these children, did they, all the way back, did they have skin problems like eczema, dermatitis? Your dad, yeah, yeah what, what about the mothers? Okay, you have to ask that question. Did they have uh, things like asthma? Anybody have respiratory stuff? Did the kids with the polycystic kidney disease have asthma or dermatitis or eczema? Eczema, okay, then they all have celiac disease. Now, they'll never fix that, but it's not a genetic thing. It's all caused by having celiac disease. So everybody's got to get on a wheat, barley, rye, and oat-free diet, and they need to be taking the Mighty 90, and the next generation of kids will not be born with PKD, polycystic kidney disease. Um, I'm a gentleman over there in the black shirt, yeah. Okay, just have to wait a second so we can get the... Then anybody have arthritis? Or... Okay. Yeah. You recommend that people start on the Mighty 90 disease, but previous to that, would you also recommend people detoxing before they start any new regimen? Okay. okay, he's asking, should people start detoxing? Well, it depends. If somebody's on 14 medications 
and they got 12 different diseases, I would not detox them first. Okay, because it's too complicated. When you put somebody on a detox who's on all these medications, they have all these diseases, you're gonna get some kind of problem. They're gonna to run to the hospital and it'll be a mess. So what you wanna do when somebody's on all these medications and have multiple diseases, you do not wanna put them on a detox at that point. You wanna get them on the Mighty 90, which will not interfere with any medications, and you get them off of gluten when they have you know, multiples of diseases, no wheat, barley, rye, and oats, and then one by one we can deal with each medication separately. But that's a complicated thing, but it's doable. Yes, ma'am, right here. Uh, the book Eat Right for Your Blood Type, are you familiar with that? I'm very familiar with it. I know Peter Diadamo very well. Okay, so what is your opinion? Is, you know, okay, the thing that's the brilliant research? about that book, in every case, it's, every diet is a non-gluten diet. It's a gluten-free diet, essentially. No gluten, the book supports that. Yes, sir. You mentioned last night um, Italians and olive oil yeah. was bad. <laughs> what do you suggest? For cooking oil. Okay, what do I suggest for cooking oil? No cooking oils. What you want to do is cook in water and butter. People have been cooking water and butter for thousands of years. It's only been in the last 50 years that everybody's told you to cook in olive oil. And, okay? Goat butter, cow's butter, um, dog butter, moose butter, <laughs> camel butter, it doesn't matter. Butter's butter. Grass fed. It doesn't cows, matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It is gentleman right here. <laughs> what causes uh, food allergies? What causes food allergies? Usually, uh, food allergies are caused by malabsorption or maldigestion. We don't break proteins up into the individual amino acids and relatively large chunks of protein called polypeptides. Maybe 20 to 100 amino acids still hooked together, absorbed. Your body recognizes them as some outside entity, you build up antibodies of those, and every time you eat that food, you get an allergy. If your digestion's perfect, you'll never get a food allergy. So you need to work on your digestion when you have a food allergy. Would that be related to eczema? Yes, eczema, if you have eczema, you've got celiac disease. You gotta get off of wheat, barley, rye, and oats, take the Mighty 90, and it'll all go away. Yes, ma'am, right there. Eczema is the giveaway. Yep. My mother has Alzheimer's. Is there anything that she can do to reverse that? Okay, is this individual in a nursing home? Yes. There's nothing we can do because they won't let you do anything. I mean, I can take her out, so. Well, you can take her out, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the secret. What you want to do is try a few things, right? Mm -hmm. Can you take her out to eat? I mean, can you take her out for kind of like a furlough? Yeah, well, you yes. want to take her out and give her some of this stuff and let her eat four or five eggs, soft scrambler in butter. And give her the Mighty 90 and do that once a week or twice a week if you can. And then see if there's a little bit of improvement then it's worth going the next step, getting her out of there. Um, this lady here in the checker outfit there, yeah. Will the Mighty 90 help with acid reflux? Oh, absolutely. Acid reflux is very common today. Just about everybody's got acid reflux and belching and burping and heartburn and you know that kind of stuff. <laughs> And um, this is actually just the opposite of what a doctor will tell you. He'll say, oh, you got to get on a proton pump inhibitor like Zantec and Prilosec and uh, what is it, the purple pill, right? Um, so you can stop the acid production, get on antacids. Well, guess what? When you have reflux and heartburn and belching and burping and bloating and gas out the other end, that's caused by not enough stomach acid. We actually have stomach acid. You can pump stomach acid down there. It just works like a charm. It all goes away. Now, for first aid, what you want to do is use what's called peppermint oil. How many of you ever heard of peppermint oil? Yeah. We actually have some here through the World Changers Church. You put a little peppermint oil in eight ounces of hot water, sip on that instead of tea, it'll go away in two minutes. Okay, okay, yeah, back there, because you're back there, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I was wondering about... Okay, like, okay, we'll come over there, okay. If you Go get ahead. your colon cleanse, do you recommend that? Because okay. the lady was saying you can get Alzheimer's when you're, you're not clean inside. Okay. A colon cleanse is not going to cure somebody of Alzheimer's disease, but we have a five-day colon cleanse. We have an every-night colon cleanse. We have blood cleanses. We have liver cleanses. We love cleanses. But it's not going to fix Alzheimer's disease. Okay. And he's coming around there. 
Okay, let him come to you with the... Um, I, I'm assuming you're a representative for all those ladies jumping up and down. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Um, about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, and I've had muscle spasms and so forth and all kinds of other symptoms, but I wanted to know what you recommend for that. Okay. Um, fibromyalgia is actually a very simple disease. It's related to um, diseases like um, uh, lupus. Okay, lupus and fibromyalgia are very simple. Muscular dystrophy, they're all kind of related. And um, what you want to do is get on a gluten-free diet. You get on, and this will be forever. You can never go back, right? Gluten-free diet. You get on the Mighty 90, take some extra selenium, and it'll just go away. We eliminated that in animals in 1957. Fibromyalgia is called white muscle disease in animals because you actually, muscle actually turns into scar tissue. But we can repair that and bring it all back. Um, and the reason why we discovered it so quickly in animals is because muscle is meat. Anything that damages the meat industry and the agriculture industry, they fix in two weeks. In human beings, the pharmaceutical industry loves it when they treat you for 40 years and 40 nights, right? Thank you. Okay. Yes, right here. Lady in red. What causes glaucoma? Okay, glaucoma is PAD, peripheral artery disease of the eye, causes blood pressure to go up in the eye. And so what you would do is you would actually approach that nutritionally as you would high blood pressure. You take the Mighty 90, you take the, um, what we call those daily tablets, and they're designed to, I can illegally say, support and promote healthy blood flow through those microscopic arteries in the eye. The eye pressure comes right down. But you have to stay away from fried foods and processed meats, deli slices, sausage, ham, bacon, bologna, salami, pastrami, pepperoni, and jerky. All of those things damage those little arteries and cause the blood pressure to go up. You've all heard of PAD in the toes and the fingers and so and in the eyes and the heart muscle and so on the kidneys in fact PAD of the kidneys causes kidney failure when you have how many have heard of kidney failure raise your hand okay good it's, it's oftentimes a complication of high blood pressure and also of uh, um, diabetes and when you have kidney failure and you're on dialysis there's nothing wrong with your kidneys I repeat that when you have kidney failure there's nothing wrong with your kidneys when you have kidney failure, you have PAD, those little microscopic arteries that feed the dirty blood into the filtering units. And we figured out a way to support and promote, I can legally say, support and promote healthy blood flow through that little microscopic artery, taking the dirty blood into the filtering units. And lo and behold, people with 5% or 10% kidney function, and within a couple of months, it goes to 100% and they're off of dialysis. And they get to keep their God-given kidney. Who? hallelujah. What can be done? What can be done to treat uh, sleep apnea? Okay, what can be done to treat sleep apnea? I love that one. Sleep apnea is a normal sleep cycle. Here's a case where doctors have turned a normal sleep cycle into a disease. Have you ever watched a baby sleep? It'll breathe for maybe five minutes or so, and then it'll stop breathing for a moment. After about 30 seconds, it goes, oh, I should, you do it. You, she knew exactly what was going to happen. You take a deep breath, and because what happens is the stimulus to breathe is caused by carbon dioxide levels of your blood. When you're laying there asleep and you're breathing properly, you blow off all the carbon dioxide in your blood. You're not generating any because you're sleeping, and you stop breathing for 30 seconds. And then when you build up enough carbon dioxide, you start breathing again. You see this in kids and puppies and adults. Sleep apnea is a normal sleep cycle. Now, let me tell you, you wouldn't even know you had it. It usually bothers your sleeping partner. <laughs> and so, you know, the way the grandpa used to solve the problem was they'd sleep in separate bedrooms, right? You ever wonder why grandma and grandpa would sleep in separate bedrooms? Because one of them was snoring, they're both snoring, out of sync, and, and when they wanted to get frisky, they put a blue thumbtack on the door above the eye level of the kids. <laughs> and they knew what that blue thumbtack meant, but... Okay, we got time for one more, I think. <laughs> Okay, but I, I'm going to be available. I'm going to be available, yes. Does the Mighty 90 help you with um, fibroids or anything like that? Oh, okay, fibroids are, are okay. Let me, that's a good one to finish on. Um, uterine fibroids or fibroid tumors, quote, unquote, is uh, actually fibromyalgia of the smooth muscle of the uterus, and it's caused by eating fried foods and processed meats. You've got to get off of fried foods and processed meats. You take the Mighty 90, 
and you uh, you got to stay away from salad dressings and mayonnaise, anything with oxidized oils in it, okay? And then you get on the Mighty 90 and throw in some extra selenium, take four or five or six of those capsules a day, and it'll just go away. It'll be a miracle. And one more question. You mentioned something about not frying eggs and not stop eating eggs on a regular for a long time. How should I say you can eat eggs a little fried, but it still be healthy for you? You cannot eat eggs fried that are still healthy for you. With butter? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. We eat them soft boiled. Or, and listen to the words here. Soft boiled, soft poached, or soft scrambling butter. And they have to be soft for you to be able to keep that cholesterol normal. Because you want that cholesterol for the brain, for hormones. Ladies, one of the secrets for getting through menopause is to eat six to ten eggs a day. Because you're going to make estrogen and progesterone. If you're on a cholesterol-restricted diet, you're giving up eggs and red meat and you're eating tofu and all that kind of stuff and cutting the fat off your meat and, uh, and eating margarine instead of butter and cooking stuff in, in um, um, oils instead of lard, guess what? You're going to be miserable for 30 years with menopause. Our grandmothers went through menopause in three seconds because they were eating eggs. <laughs> Pastor, I see you there. You know, uh, <laughs> What, we, what we're going to do, because I know y'all have a lot of questions. Here's what we're going to do. This, this is so cool of Doc to do this. Saturday morning from 11 o'clock to 2, he's going to be our guest in the Body Sculpting Center. All right, listen. You'll not only be able to come and talk to Dr. Wallet, but we're, we've called all of his products to be sent here at the same time. Okay? So, on Saturday from 11 o'clock and 2, you can stop by, you can get that Power 90, you can uh, get some uh, advice on how to use some of the stuff, and uh, we got a pallet of the stuff coming in. Isn't that cool of him to stay, stay here and to be able to do that for us? Um, now, See, everybody was telling me not to eat my eggs, and I, I knew it wasn't the Holy Ghost. I, I wasn't going to stop. I, I, I rebelled against it, you know, and, and <laughs> I'm telling you, man, 11 o'clock Saturday. I mean, this is an opportunity. I mean, he, he does 300 of these a year. We're blessed to have him here with us this time. Um, this is something that we feel is vital for Christian people that you continue to learn, you continue to learn. But I want to make sure you, that, you, that you, you, you heard something in these, next, these uh, last couple of days. You have to be responsible for giving your body Amen. what it needs in order to operate. If you give your body what it needs in order to operate, your body will take care of you. But if you challenge your body with, with stuff that's going to, you know, uh, hinder its operation and then not give it the necessary tools in order to fight and do what it needs to do. It's real simple. Uh, living a healthy life is not complicated. I mean, it, it's, it's so simple, but you've got to follow the instructions. You've got to watch those nitrates, which a, a lot of folks don't even know about. We, we love uh, sandwich meat and, <laughs> and give me a hot dog and all that other kind of stuff. That stuff kill you. And uh, even, even, um, even turkey bacon, hmm. you've, got, you've got to watch out for the turkey. You think that's a healthy alternative, but I think it has nitrates in it. Yes, well. uh, it doesn't matter if it's turkey bacon, turkey slices from the deli, or yeah. turkey sausage, it's all bad. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all bad. And uh, <laughs> look at y'all like, oh, you just messed with turkey bacon, what? <laughs> see, because they were told because it's low fat that it's good, yeah. See, yeah. but it's still yeah. got the nitrates. Yeah. There are some that there are, you have to, yeah. see, big letters, no nitrates, that's okay. Yeah. All right, so how about that, Saturday? So how many of you have questions? It's now, now tonight at the table, uh, if you didn't get a, a hold of, uh, this is information that not only gives you information about uh, all of the different packs, but on, on the back, it gives some more information. You've got phone numbers, you've got uh, websites. websites. Uh, you, we're trying to equip you so that you can, you can achieve this. It's, you know, it would be so cool, Minister Lar, that we didn't have no funerals for like Amen. six months. You know, I mean, What about none. 60 years? 60, Amen. Well, 60 years would 60 be years. great. Amen. 
of course, we'd have to reassign you somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that 60 years would be great. But it's just too many people dying at young ages. This is like, this has just got to stop. And we can lead the way, and we can accept the challenge, and it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be uh, hard. Uh, uh, Doc, that's, that's much the guy that cooks for me right there, the guy that asked you. He's an oh, okay. Italian. He asked you about oh. the olive oil because oh. he's Italian. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> well, we still love him. <laughs> well, we love him, yeah. <laughs> but, but he's been able to put a, a diet together for us where we can eat, enjoy what we eat, uh, we maintain weight. We, we're not really struggling. It's not like mm -hmm. a diet. We're just eating all the right stuff. And how about that good steak? Oh. Hooah! For all you people who want to just be vegetarians, how about that good steak? How about that brain needing that cholesterol yeah. up there from get? Come on now. How about them eggs? Uh, yeah. How about that butter? Shut up now. But you know what? I can see y'all now. I can see y'all now. I can see you right now. I'm gonna do that power nine, and man, I'm finna go and get this this honey bun. And no, 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 you, no, no. You, you you can't. The power nine is not gonna be the thing that's gonna cancel out you making the wrong decisions mm -hmm. to put the right the wrong stuff on the inside of you. So there are gonna have to be some decisions you make. And you got to discipline yourself to to stay away from some of the stuff and. Uh, Life can be good. You can you can enjoy yourself, and you know I I I just you know something must have been wrong with this. That all I need, you know, you're, all you're supposed to eat is beans. You know I just don't believe that. And the Bible said, eat meat. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna stick with the word, eat meat. I ain't just gotta just eat beans and beans. I'd be so tired of eating if I just had to eat beans all the time. Beans, 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 <laughs> beans. <laughs> eating goobers, beans. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be like that. And the good doctor has made, made it very clear to us, we've got to understand what the body needs, give it what it needs, stay away from the things that it doesn't need, and, and life should be good. We should all be uh, uh, living up to 70 and 80, what I have, and all of our hair turn white. Cool? Would you please give Doc, now I don't know if he's gonna, I don't know if he's going to be at the table or not, but I mean, you know, he between tonight and uh, Saturday, if you see him give, him, give him a big thanks and let him know how much we enjoyed him and how much we want him to keep coming back and being a part of what we got Thank going you. on here. Thank you. It's just really, really good. I mean, did you, did you really enjoy him? He, he really brought a lot of Thank balance you. and sense to what's going on. And, you know, we were... Amen. We wanted to be very prayerful about the person that would fill this slot to talk to us about healthy living. Because you can go way to the right, you can go way to the left, you can leave, you can leave pretty emotionally distraught. But I, I love this man's balance. And uh, he's, like I say, what I love about it is he's 71. And he's been on, and he's been using it since nine. Since nine, yes. So that's a whole lot different than than some dude who's, you know, forty-seven, telling you what you need to be taking. I, I, seventy one, good. <laughs> seventy one, good, and he's and he's healthy, and and, and three hundred of these uh, are done a year. Mm -hmm. A seventy-one year old doing three hundred meetings a year, and he's doing it like he's twenty-two. Come on, somebody. Okay. You know, here's one thing I'm not gonna. Here's one thing I'm not gonna forget. I got this. Boom, dead. <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> Bam, fell dead. You know. <laughs> wow, it kind of got your attention. Like, whoa. <laughs> you know. Would you please give him a big hand clap, Doc? Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank I you, certainly Kevin. appreciate it. I see you in the back. Praise God. <laughs> You want to sow into this tonight? Yeah. Let's just sit down and, and, and sow a seed into this tonight. And uh, man, I'm excited about the decisions you'll make.
excited about the decisions you make. Soft scrambled eggs and butter. That, that's how I cook it, man. Absolutely. Yes, amen. That's what I'm talking about, boy. It's my man right there, boy. That's what I'm talking about, boy. Nice steak. Tender, grass-fed, baby. Yeah, yeah. Shoot. I talking about, yeah. Beans and rice. Yeah. That ain't the Lord. That's all that stuff. The Lord talking about abundant life. <laughs> Amen. Now, um, we've got a lot of lot of neat things going on, and uh, we want you guys to be a part of it. I'll I'll take the opportunity to announce this. We will start registration in, uh, in, I think, either the last part of October and November for the official opening of our Bible school and our med school. That'll be a two-year program. And, uh, and I am so excited about it. I was so thrilled about it because uh, there are people that are graced to do things, and we need to help them to get to the place where God wants them to be. And so we will, uh, it won't be on the web the first uh, session, but after 2012, it'll be made available to the entire world. Uh, uh, you can do it on the, on, on the uh, take school on the web, or you can come in and go through the classes and stuff, but we're, we're, we're excited about it. We wanna make sure that it is something that when you go through it, you'll be prepared to do anything, amen. You'll be prepared for anything. So I'm excited about it and uh, just stirred up about it. And you'll hear more information about that uh, as we, as we uh, make progress with it to give you some official dates and everything. And it'll be one of those Bible schools where at least you've read the entire Bible and were quizzed. you were quizzed on all your reading, so at least you know about it. You wouldn't be, you'd be surprised the number of preachers who are preaching in pulpits and never read through the Bible. Don't, don't even do that. You'd be shocked to see that. But uh, it, it's going to be an amazing thing that we so look forward to as we continue to help you to f grow in grace and to, to do what God's called you to do. Hold your offerings up. Let me get you out of here. I'm not trying to keep you. Thank you all so much for coming tonight, man. It's so cool for you all to be here tonight. It's on a Thursday night. Y'all came back. Cool, church. Amen. Father, we pray over the offerings tonight. We sow them into the kingdom of God. We thank you for for good health and long life. We thank you that we'll live long and we'll live strong, hallelujah. And we thank you that our body lines up with the word of God. It lines up in, with perfect health. And we give you praise and glory for it now. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. Let's just go ahead and receive the offering. Uh, you know, I, we, we don't ever want to not have the opportunity for you to come down and get born again. So if you're here tonight and you're not born again, but you'd like to make Jesus the Lord, the Savior of your life, if you're here tonight, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, or if you're here tonight, you want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, or if you're here tonight and you believe God's calling you to join this church, we'd like for you to, to uh, take opportunity to, uh, to do what you believe God wants you to do tonight. And, uh, you know, Maybe it wasn't a Bible lesson, but it was certainly a lesson that's going to help us live better lives. And tonight, Jesus Christ is, is so available and so ready to sit on the throne of your life and to be the Lord and Savior of your life, but you've got to invite him in. So tonight, if you want to become spiritually healthy, let Jesus into your life as your Lord and personal Savior. Tonight, you rededicate your life and say, God, not only am I going to rededicate myself to good health, but I'm going to rededicate myself to living uh, in, in, in the Word of God and doing what God has called me to do, to, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or to join this church. We're going to stand in a moment, and if you'd like to respond to any of those things, we welcome you to this altar. I'll be glad and excited to pray for you tonight. So at this time, if you would stand, minister to those who are around you. If they need some help in coming down, help them come down. We'll be glad to minister to them tonight.
Congregation, don't you appreciate those who come down here? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you for the mighty hand of God on these precious lives to remove burdens and to destroy yokes. We thank you that they'll never be the same again because of the power of the Holy Ghost operating in them. We thank you that they'll, they'll live long and live strong, Father. And we give you praise and that the hand of God be upon them from this night forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. At this time, if you follow our deacons to the prayer room, they're going to take you and minister to you and give you biblical understanding of how to obtain and maintain what you came to receive. And you'll never be the same again. Never, 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 never. Praise the Lord. Well, hey, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this two-day health conference, and, and I hope it just will be the beginning of something new in your life. Tap in, I love you, and we believe that the best is yet to come. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Look at that. He's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.